mentioned that Yahoo is really smart when they offered him a lot of money for something that he created. Our next speaker worked at Yahoo during the smart days before they started making bad decisions. How many of you recognize the name of Rosetta Stone? How many of you have heard of the Golden State Warriors? How many of you have heard of Ashley Homes or Ashley Furniture? Those are just three clients for whom Dennis Yu and his team at Blitz Metrics have done work on their Facebook and digital marketing strategy. One thing that Dennis won't tell you about himself, he is a very giving person. In fact, the whole mission of his company is to not only provide world-class service to brands that you and I recognize, but he also invests in the next generation of digital marketers by hiring college students and young adults to come work for him. In fact, there's three of those guys who are here today who are part of his team, and he brings them along, he mentors them. Eventually, we may see them starting their own agencies. He loves doing that. Today, there are six WSU students who are here because Dennis asked you to be here. If you're one of those students, would you raise your hand and say, thank you, Dennis. All right. Would you please give it up for Dennis Yu? Thank you, Phil. I appreciate it. Right. Thank you guys for having us. You know, the average watch time we set on Facebook is six seconds on video. And there are two million people, sorry, two billion people that are using Facebook every day. We have spent over a billion dollars on Facebook ads. 93.6% of statistics are made up. And what you learn about math is that you can use numbers to justify anything that you want. And what I've learned, having competed in math competitions, I used to travel to math competitions. Can you believe that? You know what you do in math contests and math parties? What do you do at math parties? You do math. I know, that's what I enjoy doing math for fun. And I've realized through mentorship, and through kind of like left brain versus right brain, that the most valuable things in life are free. But the second most valuable things are really expensive. And so how do you balance the things that, because the things that are most valuable can't be measured, and by definition, the things that can be measured aren't really as valuable. So how do you reconcile the fact that there's so much data, and you have Minority Report, Enemy of the Estate, you know, Skynet, Facebook, you know, Agent Smith, The Matrix. That's how I view Facebook. I view it as instead of the green lines coming down the screen, I see the woman in the red dress. You follow me? Have you guys seen the movie Inception? And you know Inception is about the dream inside the dream inside the dream. And at the very end, you have the scene with the ice caves and the machine guns and that kind of thing and, you know, the cars falling off the bridge in slow motion. I view it as how do you play chess eight to ten steps ahead, where you already know where you want that person to be, but they don't know that. And the, the key to success on Facebook is to do that. I'm going to show you a few examples of how this is done, and it may cause you to think, hmm, how do I do that? And it may cause some of you guys to think, wow, that's kind of Machiavellian, that's kind of manipulative. But either way, I think it's important for you to be aware of how some of these techniques work and how you can use it to manipulate anyone, manipulate the media or influence, if you want to use a word that doesn't have a negative connotation. All right, open a Google search, or let's go to Chrome, and do a search for, let's see, USA Today, Logan Young. Are you guys familiar with what's happened with the Russians using Facebook ads to manipulate the election? You guys have heard about that, right? They supposedly spent $100,000, $170 million impressions. And USA Today asked my co-founder, Logan Young, to talk about how did this happen. So you'll see there's a couple articles here. Do a Apple F, and you'll see Facebook is collecting more data than anyone except the US government, said Logan Young, a vice president of strategy at Blitzmetrics, a digital marketing company that focuses on Facebook ads. That's in USA Today. Where did that come from? How does someone just get quoted by USA Today? So go to my Gmail, go to that first tab, and do a search for Elizabeth and Logan Young. And you'll see 
I think it's Elizabeth, is it? W-E-I-S, try, try Weiss, W-E-I-S-E. W-E-I-S-E. Okay, USA Today request, the second one there. Let's read my email. Okay, mm, open that up. My colleague Jessica gave me your name. I'm writing about a Facebook fake account scam. Oh, no, that's not the one I want. Go back, there's another one from her. Been in there multiple times. You don't have to retype it. Well, okay, you can if you want. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, first one. How does Facebook's ad algorithm work? Okay. How does Facebook allow advertisers to target people? What do we know about the algorithm? What's the pricing model? Is there data on it? Scroll down. And I said, hey, Beth, happy to help out. Logan and I can do 5.30 p.m. Pacific today or 8 a.m. tomorrow. And then she replies back, nah, actually, I'm being told that Logan's a better person to be asking. Sorry to be a bother, Dennis. I don't want to talk to you. You're like, not relevant. I'd rather talk to Logan, <laughs> right? Now, where did that come from? That originally came from another reporter who worked at USA Today who covered me talking about like Twitter or YouTube or something like that, right? And that goes all the way back to things like working at Yahoo because I built that initial network. But how did that happen? It's because we used the dollar a day technique because when, do you guys remember, some of you guys are going to be old enough to remember when Facebook first launched the F8 platform back in 2007, 2008, who has a crush on you and what's your IQ? Do you remember those ads, those apps? The majority of those ads were run through my ad server, all those scams. It, they weren't my ads. I, I built the network that allowed that traffic to run so that people that built these silly games, these car racing games or poker games, or it could be, what was the, what's the one where you could go to like level 40 and build a villa? The Farmville, right, those kinds of, you guys ever want to admit to wasting time playing that game? I, I played that game initially thinking, I'm just going to experiment. I'm doing this just for fun. And then pretty soon I actually got hooked, right? Like, oh, I'll be 15 minutes late for the meeting. I just have to finish, like, farming my tomatoes before they go bad, right? <laughs> but that thing took off like nothing. We built some of the first apps that were there on the platform because all of us in Silicon Valley know one another, so I was very lucky. And within a year, we were making $80,000 a day off of nothing. We were serving more traffic than anyone else on the platform, over 100 million impressions a day through an ad server that me and my buddy John Kristinak built. He and I ran the ad systems at Yahoo. We built the ad servers at Yahoo. Is anyone else here an engineer and understands ad serving? That's some complex stuff. So the reason we were able to make so much money off of Facebook is that the only way to advertise and make money back then was off of Google. So if you're playing a virtual car racing game and Jordan here has got a Ferrari and I got a Lamborghini, then Google's going to take that and say they're going to show Lamborghini and Ferrari ads. But that's not relevant. That's just what we happen to choose in the game. What's more important is who we are, right? And he's a student at WSU and likes to do photography. And his wife and him probably want to start a business. That's more relevant. The things in his profile are more relevant in what you'd serve in an ad than whatever keyword there might be. There's no keyword in your posts. Facebook is about who you are. Google's about what you're searching for, right? On Google, you know when someone needs something, but you don't know who. And on, Google, on Facebook, you know who they are, but you don't know when or what. So that's how you combine search and social. That's like great taste, less filling, which one's better. You need both. So we built an ad server that sucked in all your data. We had over 100 times more data than Cambridge Analytica. So it's kind of funny that Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook is getting so, you know, PR caught up and, oh, they got all this data. We had over 100 times more data than those guys did. And none of us are going to jail, right? Of course, they can't track any of that because that was 10 years ago. So we took that data and we injected it into ads. Do you remember those ads? The ads that we had, we injected people's names and pictures. So it would say, Jennifer. One of these three friends, and we show your face. Jennifer, one of these three friends challenges you to an IQ quiz and, and thinks that you're dumb, right? Do you, remember, have you, do you remember seeing ads that have your face and name? We even used Facebook's Chrome, their colors, their logos, made it look, we, the first ads that we ran on Facebook, they looked like error messages, like warning, you know, you have a virus or something like that, just to see if people would click on those ads. And we had to build our own ad server to do that because there was no ad technology 
that could on the fly pull in your information and inject it into the ad so every single ad was personalized to who you were. There was no ad server on the planet that could do that back then, and we built it. And we learned so much about, by the way, I've never given this speech before. I'm like Joel, just making this stuff up. I'm telling you stuff that, you know, the FTC investigated us. It was great. We were actually on the good side. I was afraid. We flew into DC, and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to jail. And they said, no, 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 no. They had 12 lawyers all around the table. And I thought, oh man, this is like, I didn't bring a lawyer. But actually, they wanted our help to figure out how to create new privacy rules because of social media, because of retargeting. They wanted to build a do not retarget. It would be similar to like do not call and do not mail, where you put your name on a do not list, right? And they thought that'd be a good idea. And I told them, you guys, that's not going to work. Because when you're playing a game on Facebook, and you're sharing all your friends' information. They've already shared your information. You can put your name on a list. It doesn't matter. Your information's already out there. Facebook, for example, creates ghost profiles. You guys know how ghost profiles work? So even if you're not on Facebook, there's a profile for you because of your friend's address book, because of what's on your phone, because of where you are, because you guys are, like, maybe you have a child that has special needs. And you don't want anyone to know that, because that's a personal kind of thing. But you're going to a group meeting at the same restaurant every Wednesday evening with other people at that same time. They can connect the dots. They can listen to what's on your phone, just like Google is listening. You know, there's a, a friend of mine's got a shirt that says, you know, the NSA, the only government agency that's actually listening, right? Facebook and Google are listening. So we are beyond the days of what will happen when they have all our data. That happened 20 years ago. All this stuff is out there. It's too late to think that you're private. So my buddy Alex Schultz, he runs growth at Facebook. He's probably one of the top five people at Facebook. And he and I had dinner recently over this discussion on how everyone's closets are getting smaller, right? There's less things that you can hide. If you've done some things maybe in high school that, you, that were kind of silly, but today if you did those things in high school, it would be out everywhere. So, you know, thank goodness people like Phil and I were old enough, like whatever we might have done a long time ago, there's no like, you know, no recording or Snapchat or live video or any of that kind of stuff. Thank goodness. I don't think I'd ever make it as a teenager today, right? The kinds of things that we did. But we were saying, the reason you see more scandals and fake news and all this kind of uproar, people are mad about stuff. It's not that society has gone downhill necessarily. I mean, that could be true. It's because now everything is public. But at the same time, if politicians are getting exposed for sex scandals, so I have no political affiliation or whatever, right? You could say Donald Trump did this or didn't do that, whatever. But the fact that that stuff is coming out and he can maintain his position in office and people are not as mad about that speaks to the fact that if everyone's closets are getting smaller, people's tolerance is also higher. Does that make sense? So when you think about what's occurring in social media, let's go back to Chrome. Think about what this, what this means in terms of building influence and how you adapt on a personal and a business level. Let's go to Joel Com and see his public figure page on Facebook. Where's Joel? Is he still? Awesome. So let, let's put him on the spot because he's, he's an old timer like me, 20 something years. So we type in Joel Com, and we'll see him as a, there's him as a person but there's him as a public figure page too. He's got his blue check mark on his profile, just like me. I put my, you and I, we're going against the grain, against what Facebook says. Go to business manager, and you'll see that he's talking about the Bad Crypto Podcast. He's talking about his books. He's talking about other things that are going on. And you can use Facebook to boost against other influencers to double up. So the way that we got into the New York Times and Wall Street Journal and all this kind of stuff that was 10 plus years ago was when we made all this money on Facebook. Right? We were making tons of money on Facebook, did the whole media tour. We took those articles and those videos and then boosted that to other journalists, which then gave us more media attention, and we've continued to boost that even up until today. So we could do nothing, like we talked about in the workshop, and continue to build presence. So think about where you might have something that was from five or ten years ago. So I believe firmly that Joel and me and Travis and Chris our best days are yet to come. We're not just old timers. Because back in my day, when we used the A track, we had scroll down, Alex. Alex is 25. Andrew, I think he took off. He's 19. We're, Christian is, how old are you? He's 19. I'm double his age. We'll go check out to, into a hotel, and people say, Are you getting a separate room for your son? 
They don't even yeah, card me anymore. I mean, come on, right? So you'll see, right? Joel's got tons and tons of this live video because he was originally branded as the live video king, and some of these items will boost, right? And you will, the idea of the greatest hits, they live forever. What are your greatest hits? What's your experience that you can share? It could be a long time ago. Most people say, oh, well, this thing happened five years ago. Even better, it's classic rock, right, or jazz, right? What, what can you use to be able to use Facebook as a multiplier? Imagine that I gave you a machine, this black box, and whatever you put inside the machine, close the lid, press the button, it gave you 10 times whatever it is that you put in there. Would you, would you like that kind of machine? What would you stick inside that machine? Money, jewelry, things that are valuable, right? Because you, you put a, a $10 bill inside the machine, press the button, and then all of a sudden you got 10 $10 bills, right? That's awesome, right? You wouldn't put a piece of poop in there. That'd be dumb, right? So why does that matter? Because everything is becoming more competitive on Facebook. There's more content exponentially competing for your attention. And therefore, if you put out the same quality of content you've always been putting out, you're going to get hammered. People complain about, oh, my stuff's not being seen on Facebook. They're forcing me to advertise. I can't keep up. I can't. That is a strategy of someone who's going to lose or is already losing and is never going to be able to overcome. The reason why I am very optimistic about Facebook and Google becoming more competitive, and the algorithms have to chew through more stuff, and fewer items make it to the top. Right? So what makes it to the top? Things that pass an even higher bar. Fake news. Things that have the highest engagement. So think of it this way. There was, I'll tell you the only joke I know. I don't tell very many jokes. So a guy's walking on the beach, and all of a sudden, he picks up a magic lamp, rubs it, and out pops a genie. He's like, holy moly, a genie. And the genie's like, yep, I'm, I'm not just an ordinary genie. I'm a special modern day genie, and I'm going to give you three wishes, of course, but Lauren, the three wishes I'm going to give you, whatever you get, your ex-husband gets double, whatever it is, right? I'm like, oh, man, I don't know if any of you get, like, I'm sure Joel can relate. I'm not married, so I can make these kinds of jokes. So the guy says, all right, mm, genie, first wish, I want you to give me $10 million. Poof, $10 million in front of him, and then at the same time, $20 million to the ex-wife. He's like, ah, oh, man, but he's happy with the $10 million that he first got, right? And then he says, Jeannie, for the second wish, I want you to give me 10 Ferraris. Bam, 10 Ferraris all lined up, right? And then all of a sudden, the ex-wife, 20 of these Ferraris all lined up, right? And the genie says, all right, you got one wish left. What would you like? And he says, Jeannie, I want you to knock me half dead. And that's how it works today with the algorithm on Facebook. It's more competitive. So... The fact that these other people are complaining, if your content is stronger, that's going to eliminate everybody else. It's fantastic. We see reach increasing. We see engagement and profit increasing for people that are making one-minute videos and boosting them for a dollar a day. Are you guys doing that? Every time I hear someone complain like, oh, I can't generate leads on Facebook, I smile. I'm like, yeah. Stay away from Facebook. I don't want any more competition. This is good for us, right? The more you think that it's not possible to drive sales on Facebook, the more I just smile about that. And the way to do it is through inception. It's like Fight Club, right? What's the number one rule of Fight Club? That's right. So what you, and for the same reason, I don't believe that any of us should be working on our own personal brands. What? But Dennis, I thought it's all about personal branding. You're supposed to be like going live all the time like Chris Strubb and these other people. You're supposed to be like some social media person with the phone on all the time. No, I said, you should not be working on your own personal brand. You've got to get other people to talk about you. What's more power, me saying, I'm really good at Facebook ads, or Phil Mershon saying, oh yeah, Dennis is really good at Facebook ads, and same with his people and all that kind of stuff. It's way more powerful to get other people to talk about you. Let's go to Logan Young's public figure page. What's more powerful, Logan saying, yeah, I've been doing Facebook ads for three years, and here's a list of all these Fortune 500 companies that I've optimized their ads for, or Logan hanging out with Mark Zuckerberg and him showing insights, visiting Facebook, collaborating on some of the new products that they're rolling out with, right? 
Are you clicking on it? All right, this thing's slow. The internet is really brutal here. I'm gonna, I always like to make these click jokes, right? So the, the authority, the whole thing with fake news and high engagement is there's a difference between actual authority and implied authority. Actual authority is you have the expertise to get something done. You have a checklist, you, you, know, you actually know how to build websites or know how to do photography or know how to bake chocolate chip cookies or whatever knowledge you have. You actually are the real deal. Implied authority is people think that you're good because you have the microphone, because you're on CNN, because whatever these kinds of things. So I believe it's more important, this is unfortunate, it's more important to have the perception of authority. Because if people don't believe that you are the real deal, it doesn't matter. Like, you need both. But you have to start with the implied authority, right? Where people perceive you to be good at what you do, which drives inbound marketing. Then they trust you, and then they can hire you. And then it's about whether you can deliver, whether your product does what it says it is, whether it's, you know, then it generates word of mouth, and it generates all these other things. I believe the... Implied authority comes before actual authority. It is actually more important, which then encourages people who are fraudulent. So you see here, anytime you have someone where they're speaking on a big stage, they're with other people that are famous, they have some kind of case study that's shown in a format that looks because it's on CNN or it's being shared by the American Marketing Association, that is all perceived authority, right? You've got to do all the things that are necessary. That's why, like with perceived authority, you see people, I was joking with one of my friends, you know what, we should rent Lamborghinis for the day and go around and just make all these and then have bookshelves in the back and make fun of these other people that do that sort of thing, right? Just because that would get so much engagement, right? But I intentionally don't. So, you know, there's Logan and Mari Smith or Logan on CNN and all these kinds of things. All those things are perceived authority. Even though... All of us here probably are not the types where we're constantly like selfing ourselves. You have to be willing to, to have, if you're not doing it, you have to have other people that are handling your PR for you. Because you don't want to feel like you're the type where you're kind of self-promoting and chef speeding and trying to be like a motivational speaker. Look, I'm not trying to be one of those. She's doing it. That's great. See, now she's doing my marketing for me because she can take that and post it and then I might boost it and comment and now my audience is her audience and, and vice versa, right? So let's go to Logan's media kit. Three years ago, Logan was delivering pizza for Pizza Hut at $9 an hour. He didn't know who Mark Zuckerberg was. And now he's the man. And this, this is his media kit. Let's just walk through some of these components because it it's personal branding, and it's also a company as well. So here are pictures of high authority of who he, who he is. We're at Social Media Marketing World. Thank you, Phil. Right, workshops. A lot of you guys have been to our workshops. There's pictures of him. There he is on CNN. Keep going. High authority articles where he's been interviewed, where he's been written about. By the way, we've been building lots and lots of Logans. I don't even like to talk about myself. I'm only telling you this from an inception standpoint to show you behind the scenes of what it looks like when you want to build up other people's brands. Some people say I'm like a puppeteer or manipulator, but I think that's not a nice way of looking at it. But you have, you have these, let's keep going. They're speaking in all these different places. There's a speaker reel, keep going. But his personal brand, oh no, go back. His personal brand, think about your personal brand. What is a personal brand? It's the sum of what you stand for, encapsulated in your why, how, and what. The why videos, different stories that show what you believe in, how demonstrating expertise, what the things you sell so you can make money to be able to afford to pay for all the promotion that you need for everything else. So when we take his why, how, and what videos, and you can make nine one-minute videos in nine minutes to so shoot them all at once if you want, just to get it going, just to overcome the whole, oh, I don't want to make any videos or tomorrow, or I'm busy, I don't have any money, all the excuses. Just put that stuff out there, boost it for a dollar a day. Target the people that you know are going to resonate with this so you can generate the perceived authority. You've got to have the perceived authority first, not just tons of fake likes from the Philippines. We love the people from the Philippines. Keep going. We hire a ton of them. You take those outside videos into your topic wheel, and then that goes into, so for example, he's got six topics, right? LDS, adventure travel, mentorship. Keep going. Now, when you take these people that have authority, in those other topics, their authority becomes your authority. Their audience becomes your audience. You boost posts against 
those, keep going, against those particular people. So let's say that it's Heather Dobson, right? She runs social media at GoDaddy. You guys have heard of GoDaddy? And there's interviews, interviews of him and Heather together. We're going to take that and boost it to all the people that work at GoDaddy all the people that are GoDaddy customers. If you're a GoDaddy customer and you see interviews of Heather and Logan together, you've already created that implied authority, right? And then you can sell to that audience. And they're doing the selling for you. Do a Google search for Heather Dobson and Logan Young. I think we have like four minutes. And you'll see that Logan has been on the show, he's written articles, he's on the blog, there's pictures of them together. We manage Heather's personal brand, so that helps as well, right? And you'll see tons of these. Yeah, all of, all of these are good things to click on, right? Lots of examples, right? Hanging out together and keeping all of that together in your media kit in some kind of Google Drive and some kind of sheet and some kind of spreadsheet, like some kind of place that you have a VA, a virtual assistant, managed for $3 an hour for you, right? Or an intern from WSU or some kind of place, right? So let's go back to the media kit. Lots of videos there. So think about who has the most authority. Go back. I didn't. Who has the most authority in the areas that you want to be known for? Interview those people. Talk to them. Write about what they're talking about. If you don't know them, you can retweet their stuff, right? And therefore, their authority becomes your authority into the topics that you care about that sequences into what you're selling. Everyone here has to sell something to make money. If you don't make money, you can't afford to fund the rest of this machine, right? That's how you tie the what, how, and why together. Keep going. When you do that, keep going. Oh, shoot, that's the end of it? I thought we had, oh, this is an older version. Go back to the topic, Will, or the three by three. Yeah, okay. So as you start to make better videos, as you start to interview more people, as you go from a B-list celebrity to an A-list celebrity, how then do you leverage up, right? How do you keep things going? You boost posts for a dollar a day. Go back to Logan's public figure page. When we find winners, or Joel's, it doesn't matter. We do this for like 100 of these folks, right? This will work for you. You don't have to be Joel Com to have this work. You do not have to be someone famous. You do not have to have lots of money, right? It can be anybody. You, you take this, oh man, this internet is killing me, guys. You take these one minute, think about the power in this room. Think about the knowledge in this room. Think about Jordan, he's got his fancy DSLR here, right? Ready to take pictures of you. I'm sure you could hire him for, for a pretty reasonable price, less than what we charge, right? And you start boosting the interviews where you're not even talking about yourself. You're acting like a journalist. So the best way to get on CNN or the LA Times is to act like a reporter. And instead of me talking about myself, I'm gonna interview Nora, right? And, talk, and ask her about her expertise because then she's going to share that, and I'm going to share her stuff, and I'm going to boost it to her audience, right? So what can I do to uplift other people, to interview them, to incept their audience, so that if I'm working closely with Facebook and GoDaddy and Infusionsoft and all these other people in my space that I want to be in, then they're doing the marketing for us. Do a Google search for HubSpot in my name. You'll see all these articles, right, that are coming out. What has more authority? Articles on Facebook's own marketing blog talking about how you do Facebook ads for a dollar a day using our examples, like with the Golden State Warriors or Rosetta Stone. Mark Zuckerberg talking about what we've done with Rosetta Stone. We've had over a million redemptions on a single offer, the highest that they've ever gotten in the offer's product, right? He loves talking about that. So what's better, getting them to talk about you or you talking about yourself? This is the ultimate hallmark of inbound marketing. How can you get that done? Everyone here has friends and great case studies and great examples. The best thing you can do is elevate other people. That's why I like to elevate Alex, for example. Where we have Christian, where we have other folks where we're elevating their hard work, elevating their expertise, elevating Joel Com and Chris Strub and Phil Mershon and other folks. The best marketing we can do is to elevate other people because word of mouth marketing starts with you saying thank you, which is the most powerful thing that you can do in business. Find a way to systematically do that. We do that by hiring young adults, which are way cheaper than hiring other folks, and also virtual assistants in the Philippines. Our entire marketing strategy is to take care of other people. Phil said that I'm a giver. I'm actually a very selfish giver because I know that if we invest in people like Christian, and he's taking video right here, and we're going to use this video later, think about 
how when his career gets built up, we've got like a minute left, when his career gets built up, he's, gonna, he's, he's trained up in the right way from the beginning in our methods of doing things, right? Go do a search for Kevin Cote on Facebook. So Kevin Cote runs Global Sports at Facebook. He's in charge of all of these sports partnerships. And he does a lot of good things for us. He refers other teams that need help. Yep, that's him, right? Fantastic knowledge, really good guy. But guess what? He, prior to Facebook, he ran digital marketing at the Golden State Warriors. And he was a client of ours for quite some time before he then moved into Facebook. So that's an example of a long-term investment. You invest in these relationships, and then eventually these people, they're not like moles or plants or spies or double agents or anything like that, but they eventually make their way into these other companies, and they bring you along. That is ultimate word of mouth. It is not get rich quick, it's get rich slow. Every strategy here that we've told you, do you guys have your, your handbook? Does anyone not have this handbook from the workshop this morning? Okay, so see Christian or Alex. Our entire goal here is to get you to get started on making your one-minute videos and start boosting for a dollar a day and overcome any excuse you have to show you that a 19-year-old who only has a couple months' experience can do this, right? You don't need any kind of money, and if you're my age, then hire a young adult, right? But go through this list. We're here for you guys. We're here to help. Any questions that you have, let us know. Thank you very much. Before we take a break, I want to get Dennis to show you how many of you would like to see what he means by a dollar a day? Is that a confusing topic? Yeah, I think a fair number would like you to maybe just demonstrate when, on what kind of post would you spend a dollar a day, and then how do you know you've got a winner? Just take like three minutes to do that. So let's go to the man in the pew. Let's go to Phil's blog, Man in the Pew, for the ordinary guy that wants to have a closer walk with God, right? And there's his page, and he's got lots of video. We use business manager, so click on business manager. Doesn't matter which business manager you use. You can use Mars, maybe. And you'll see that Phil has been, how many interviews have you had so far? 49, fantastic, right? And then these interviewees are, he's creating summaries. He's got little video, uh, testimonials, snippets. And sometimes they're just memes. Sometimes it's just a quote with a beautiful image. And you'll see, we could just take that one for example. Let's see how that one's doing. Why pray? Does it really make a difference? Is it, isn't it just hocus pocus? Listen in as Dave Scott and Phil Mershon discover or discuss what prayer does for believers. Now we can target all sorts of folks. Let's scroll down and see which is the main one that we're using here. Keep scrolling. Keep going. Let me find that I want. Maybe it's in the other account. I don't remember which account it's in. That's okay. I can't find the one I want. But the, the point is, actually, you know what? I'm going to cheat. Scroll up. And let's click edit. And... Somebody name an audience you want to target. We'll be done in a minute and a half. Somebody name a target. Someone you'd like, some audience that you'd like. Who? Pet owners? What kind of pet owner? Actually, type in pets. Or pets. Or, oh, yeah, there we go. So you've got, okay, so we have happy pets, pet lovers, the Sims pets, which is like virtual stuff. You can target people from a behavior. Actually, type in browse pet lovers. You can target behavior. So whether or not they like certain pages, you can target what they've purchased, right? No, 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 no. Not type in the word browse. Ty yeah, hit browse, type in pet. Yeah. It's all in fun. Alex is awesome. He, he tolerates this. What are we doing here? Yeah. So, okay, where are we going here? Those are all interests. Yep. Okay. Behaviors. Expand behaviors. Scroll down. Digital activities, oh, keep going down. More categories. Or purchase, I'm oh, sorry, purchase behavior. Purchase behavior. No, you had it there. Yep. All right. See, these are things that people have been buying. Homes and guards, pet products. Okay, dog food, cat food. Where are you going? Just click on any of those things under pet products. So these are people that have recently purchased dog food in the last 30 days. 
Where's that data come from? Do you have a loyalty card? Do you have a credit card? Are you earning points? That's where it's coming from, all that data. If you're not using cash, all your data are belong to us. Resistance is futile. So I can take that target, and let's say that there, it's a pet thing. I can come down here. Let's pretend that we had our target here. Cancel out of here just so we can show. Scroll down to the bottom of that one, and then we can boost that for a dollar a day. In this case, let's, yeah. So there are 15, yeah, $7, seven days. And then you'd hit boost. Don't hit boost here because we didn't have the right targeting in place. But that's what you do. It's that easy. You would do it on your phone. I do it inside Pages Manager. It's that easy. There is no excuse. It's not hard to do. It's not expensive. Facebook should pay us a commission for showing you how this is the case. But that's it, right? Are you guys doing that? I boost right here on the phone inside the Pages Manager. Okay, so Insights is showing, let's scroll down to see the most recent posts. And by the way, most of your posts are going to suck. Just assume 90% are going to suck. Scroll down. We don't want to look, look at a particular post yet. Okay, see, click on see all posts, make it bigger. So the dark orange is when we're boosting for a dollar a day, and the light orange is just organically what we're getting. The more we spend on advertising, the more organic reach we're getting on top of that, right? So what I'm looking for is when that, when the engagement rate, you see like the, on the right, the light blue and the purple, when that is, is really high relative to this reach here. So I've got 3,900 views, 669 engagements off the 16.7 reach. Let's click on that post and see if we can get a little more detail. Anything that's good, I want to make bigger. I want to just let it live forever, right? Just continue to double and triple up on that. Now I can see 16,000 reach. I got 4,000 reactions, comments, and shares, 25%. I'm looking for at least 10%. So I got 25% of people that basically like that, and 669 clicks. I'm at 4,600, and I only got 10 negative feedbacks. Nine people clicked hide the post. One person clicked hide all posts. That's only 10. Those 10 people count for a thousand negative. Or you need, I need a thousand likes to offset the 10 negative feedbacks. One piece of negative feedback. I need a hundred likes to outweigh. If you're not getting reached, that's why. Most people don't get that. Negative feedback is so toxic. We talked to Facebook engineering, and they've confirmed that that's the case. But look, his positive feedback is so high, that engagement rate is so high, that that's why he's able to get so much more organic traffic and then get this thing for so cheap. I don't know how much money we spent, but you know, maybe it's 10 bucks or 20 bucks. That's not bad to get 4,000 people to click like. But if he boosted that for 10 or $20, and then we had high negative feedback, the engagement rate was low, therefore the cost per engagement rate is high, I'm not going to keep putting money on that. That's trying to floor it when the e-brake is on. You guys follow me? So cost per click, cost per engagement is based on the vertical. Certainly if I'm selling home security systems with ADT, that's different than selling pet care products. But generally, I like to see cost per engagement under 15 or 20 cents. I like to see cost per video view at maybe a penny and a half to two cents. Cost per 10 second video view is the best at the top of the funnel. I want to see that under two or three cents. I want to see a 50% conversion from a three, a three second watch to a 10 second watch time, right? The average fall off is you lose 30% from an impression to a view, which is three seconds, and you lose another two thirds from three seconds to 10 seconds, right? I want to try to get as many 10, I need to see 25% of the people who are exposed to something become a 10 second view. Therefore, I'm going to be able to get a two cent cost per view or less. I'll be able to get a cost per website click of 50 cents in that range. Cost per lead, if I'm running lead ads, under $4. Cost per app install, under $4. ROAS, probably five or higher. These are all standards of excellence you should be able to shoot for. It varies by industry, but those are kind of the benchmarks of what we've seen. This changes over time. Things are getting more expensive. The price is doubling every year but you still should be able to get close to these benchmarks. I know I'm way over on time. Oh, you want to take one more? Last question, ma'am. So negative feedback is not, like for the Warriors, it's not like, oh, Golden State Warriors is going to lose, or you guys, you know, LeBron James is going to join your team, and then people will hate you. Negative, it's not comments, it's not sentiment. Negative feedback is any of four particular actions that Alex has shown here. 
They, they want to hide post, hide all posts, report spam, or unlike page. Those are the, they have to actually click one of those four things as negative feedback. It's not words, you know, like foul words or suck or loser or like those. That's not negative feedback. Negative feedback is any of those four particular actions which you see whether or not you boost a post, they show you that info. So you need to watch out for that. I'm not saying be so afraid that even if you have like one negative comment, you should like shut down your page. I'm not saying that. Look at this in proportion. When we first started doing this for Jack Daniels, we had some of these posts that would get 100 negative feedbacks, but we'd get a million likes. So 100 negative feedbacks relative to a million likes, that's okay. Just look at the proportion. All right, thanks guys.